Because I guarantee you, everyone has moments like this throughout the day where they ramble and they think to themselves, and that's all I'm doing now. All I'm doing now is rambling, except I'm doing it to my phone with a thought that I had a few hours earlier about a successful director who died. And I thought, I'm going to share that with everyone else. If you have an idea, act on it. What's up? It's a rainy day and I'm just doing a spontaneous vlog because I can't think of anything else to do. But it's an important vlog. As you could probably tell by the title because you clicked on it. Anyone who has got anything to do with the film industry or is anyone anyone who's passionate with the film industry would have heard and known that Wolfgang Peterson passed away recently and I know that we live in a culture now where people pass away like this and it gets talked about for maybe five, ten minutes on the news and and then people get on with their lives and we accept that and that's kind of part of modern life. But I don't accept that, you know. As I've put in the title, it matters because I don't think people realise the knock-on effect in this industry. You know, how many people worked with each other. The creative industry is huge. You know, especially Wolfgang in, in particular. People like him are, you know, they come along once every now and then. You know, I think of especially people like Michael Crichton in particular in the 90s. The 90s was huge, especially for filmmaking. And they there was this there was this era and there was this there was this there was this sense of well we can do this, we're gonna do that. And it wasn't like now where there was this streaming and CGI and you know, anything is done with somebody with a laptop and, you know, a certain software. It was, it was different. And, you know, not just for me personally, but Air Force One was one of my favourite films growing up. And he's been involved in many other fil gr great films. Uh, but... You know, it, it matters because I'm shaking all over. I'm on my bed, but it's first thing in the morning. It, it matters because you know, just like Prince, uh, this is going back a few years now. You know, Prince, Prince died and what, he got like five, ten minutes on telly. You know, Wolfgang was a master of his art. And I know I know a lot of people will say, yeah, Air Force One, cheesy. It's you know, if 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 he did it now, probably wouldn't be allowed, you know, with all the you know, politics issue, all the, you know, action stuff. It's it's a it's a cheesy nineties action movie you know it's you know uh, that's how people probably see it the thing that people forget about these directors the and and and, and movie makers that are leaving us it's storytelling 
you know, it doesn't matter the fine details in this cancel culture world that we live in, that people love to talk about. It's the ability, you know, it was funny, I was watching A Star Is Born last night. And it's that, it's, it's, it's that favourite, I've really got to use the fucking tripod. It's, the, it's that favourite line, isn't there, that when they're in the bar, that cop bar, is my favourite scene. And, you know, he's talking about how everyone is talented, you know, but having something to say about it, that's... That's, that's the hardest thing ever. And that's why, you know, things like this matter. Because these directors were able to do it. And I don't think people nowadays do. If you compare the quality, if you compare the way they do it, it it's, it's not the same. There is... There is, there is, there is a gap there. You know, storytelling. And if you talk to the people in the industry, in the, in the wider industry, let's talk about it. You know, not just film specific. Um, it's, it's all about storytelling now. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're, um, a copywriter, whether you're a social media influencer, whether you're you know, uh, a movie maker. It's the ability to story tell that. If, if, if you can do that, then yeah, you are, you are winning. Um, and I think, and, and why I think stuff like this matters is because you know, that that's what they did. And I, I don't think people talk enough about it. You know, I've been talking for six minutes now. You know, Wolfgang Peterson was a storyteller. And whether you like films like Air Force One or not, or some of his other films, whether you think they're cheesy or old, you know, he had ability to story tell, you know. I go back to, you know, one of my older examples. Michael Crichton in the 90s. Yes, he's famous for being involved in ER because that's, you know, one of my favorite TV shows. And if you talk to anyone in the industry, they will always say, you know, he is renowned for being involved in the art because he well he he built it he, he wrote it he, he made it but obviously he died before it finished um but around the 90s and around that time because he was such a good storyteller because he was such a good writer and this is what the industry has missed he also was a producer and a scriptwriter on so many films in the 90s. If you actually, the reason why, you know, end credits is such a big deal nowadays, and I don't think people watch them enough. If you actually watch the credits of a lot of films in the 90s, you know, I think Dante's Peak is one, um, uh, I think Twister is another one, um, you know, um, you know, and, uh, and guess who's involved in the, in the writing of that, in, in the storytelling? Michael Crichton. Uh, we've gone off Wolfgang a second here, but the point is, it always comes down to the storytelling. And to go back to the original title, you know, Wolfgang Peterson, his passing, again, it's very sad, but it matters. Because it's yet again another individual 
in the industry who offered so much and has offered so much and are we gonna have that again you know it's it, it's a sad thought but it doesn't look like you know we're having the same amount or or, or the same level of storytelling from our current level than we are from our older generation, which is a weird thought, you know, and I'm going on a bit of a ramble because this is what I do. That is where I live. It's weird. Um, you know, on Amazon, when they do all the photo spin, if you've got, if you've got a smart device, if you've got a smart TV, um, yeah, photos come up and they, they go on a random generated thing, like a screensaver. Um, a photo of Dorset, where I live, has just come up. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah. A random vlog. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this all night. I was thinking... A vlog, a vlog, 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 vlog. And then, here I am. I think, as well, people, do, people put too much pressure on storytelling. Because I've been doing this for 11 minutes now. And I will try and edit and make it into, you know, I've done 214 videos now. And I try, every single time I try and put a little bit, try and edit it, try and make it into a nice collective edit for somebody to watch. I don't think I'm going to do that this time. I think I'm just going to have it old school. Just me and the camera talking and if they don't like if they don't want to listen if they don't want to like that's all i've been talking about it now for 12 minutes you know i came up with a whole podcast because with the concept of alexander talks i managed you know several podcasts later nothing specific about my content is scripted or planned. I, again, I'm going off topic again. I always find this really, really strange when so many people now, because the podcast phase has gone so, so, so strange, where people get podcasts and I won't name names because I'm not the only one with a podcast. And they go all in, right? You know what I mean? So they get the studio. So they get the headset, they get the, the they get the microphone, they get the chairs, they get the, the, you know, they get the fancy backlight, they get the, they get, they get everything looking all nice. Uh, and then they get the camera, they get the, you know, quality, you know, this is, this is, I'm filming this on my phone. I don't care that I film this on my phone, it's, it's just the same. But they're filming on perfect camera quality, you know, perfect studio, perfect everything. And before they do all of that, they haven't even thought about what they're going to make. And this is where I think people go wrong. To go back to my original point about Wolfgang Peterson in the 90s, storytelling. You know, he didn't have all of that fancy equipment. He didn't have all the technology that people have now of Netflix and Amazon, you know, of all the originals and streaming and, and all that stuff. But what did he have? And what did I have? And what does 
you know, the what, what do the people have? This. Fucking creativity. You don't need fancy equipment and fancy stuff to make. All you need is creativity and a little bit of inspiration. This is on my phone. Boom. Content. Wolfgang Peterson didn't have any of this. And he used all of his creativity and all of his inspiration. Just like Michael Crichton did. Just like everyone else who's ever done anything in the industry. Whether it's I'm writing my screenplay, whether it's I'm writing, whether it's anyone else who's ever doing anything creative. Do you think they sit with makeup on in a fancy studio, with fancy cameras pinpointed on them before they've even thought of anything? No. We are facing a turning point of bordering on reality TV and stepping away from creative storytelling. And this is what I'm afraid of. This is what I'm afraid of with things like, you know, Stranger Things, Netflix, all kinds of things. Very concerning. And I'm not going to change this title. I'm not going to change the title. This is, I mean what I said. Why Stranger... No, not, not why Stranger Things. Why Wolfgang Peterson and why is death matters? Because the, it can be as simple as I was watching Life on Mars, you know, the other day. Some people might not even know what the fuck that is because they're so young. That came out, what, 2000, 2006, I think? I think it was 2006, 2006, 2008. Or well, the second season was 2008. <clears throat> and the, the creativity and the writing of that show is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. You know, you have to search for this stuff on the iPlayer now in the category from the archive. Because it's it's just not there. You can't look for it any, anywhere else. And and when you see all the other stuff, all the new stuff get released, whether it's on Amazon Original, Netflix, anything else, after watching this. You know, these kind of things, when they've been first released, whether it's a film, whether it's a TV series, you know, and being old enough to remember the days of, you know, that, um, before Netflix. There's no technology, there's no real technology. It's all, it's all script. It's all, it's all written, it's all storytelling, it's all acting, and... There's so many shows that have been done 10, 15 years ago that are, that are good like that. Um, and I think it's not just shows. I mean, you're talking about an industry that is massively wide in, 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 in general perspective, you know, and it's it's easier now to make videos on YouTube or TikTok than it is on you know if you wanted to do it as a as a career. So you know, figure that one out. Um, yeah. Anyway. 
What else is updated? The Battle for United. Could talk about that. I feel like I should do a separate video for United. Because if I put in how I felt about United, and if I put in how I felt about the Glazers, and if I put in how I felt, I'm already talking about it. See, I fell into the trap. You know, there are awesome people who do YouTube videos and put their time and effort into talking about Manchester United. But I don't think I could do that. You know, it's, it's, it's hard enough being a Manchester United supporter, especially the last 10, 15 years. So, what's going on at the moment is just, if you ever saw the show Billions with Damian Lewis, it's like that. Yeah. And don't say it isn't, because it is. Billionaires have egos. So... We're currently owned by exactly those, and they have egos. And then there's a whole world full of people who are billionaires. And then they have egos, and then they, and then they go, ooh, look, look what's going on there. That looks like fun because they live in a completely different world to what the average individual lives in. So they could do that because a billionaire, if they want to, if they want to do something for fun or if they want to do something to satisfy their needs, whether it be ego or Competitiveness, whatever it is, they'll do it. So in a good way, that's good for us. But in a bad way, means uh, means a lot of stress. Anyway, I've been talking for a long time. I don't know what to call this. I'm going to stick with calling it about Wolfgang, because that is what I intended the video on. Because it matters. You know, that's what the thumbnail will be about. You know, Wolfgang Peterson. And, and it matters. You know. Another amazing director, producer. On. you know is there a massive ramble afterwards about random shit yeah of course but you know people don't always listen to me you know five six seven minutes afterwards they don't maybe they listen a minute afterwards so i'll worry about that another time I'll just make the video. You know, something to do when it's raining out there and I'm in here. And the key concept of the idea is, because that's kind of what matters, is if you have an idea, 
two key ideas. A, remember to use your tripod, even if you're filming on your bed. Two, because I had an idea about Wolfgang Peterson, and here I am now, filming and chatting about him. So, if you have an idea, act on it. Right. Peace out, and rest in peace, Wolfgang.